Alright, coming in at number 10, we have the homunculus theory from Cars. Sure. I actually wasn't ready for this. Like, why, why, why do theorizey people with their brains need to go around making disturbing theories? Why can't they just enjoy movies? Why? So, Disney Pixar's Cars is a great film. I love it. It's set in an alternate kind of universe where humans don't exist or they don't seem to. Maybe they did one day in the past, but they aren't around anymore. We never meet a human. The only sentient beings seem to be the cars themselves. And boats. I did see some boats. But mainly, it's cars. Hooray for cars. Cars as far as the eye can see. Cool. Weird, but you know, it's a movie, so let's just let it go. Which is what some people should have done. Unfortunately, though, some people pointed out that if this is the case, if there are no humans around, then why do the cars have windows, door handles, mirrors, and a steering wheel? These are functions made for humans. Well, the theory goes that humans are actually living inside the cars, and the car outer shell is like a strange exoskeleton. Do you remember the tiny alien in the person's head in Men in Black? It's a bit like that, but creepier. Someone has drawn a physiological diagram of what this would look like, and honestly, I don't like it. You can read pages and pages and pages of theory, and honestly, we don't have time for the disturbing ins and outs, but I'll leave you with this. In the theory, they say that humans are lab grown in amniotic vats and then embedded within an automotive exoskeleton. Coming in at number nine, Carl was dead all along in Up. There is one super sad and morbid theory out there that goes that Carl, the lovely grumpy old man, died the night after the courts tell him he has to leave his home in his sleep. Everything else is said to be his adventure to heaven to be with his dead wife, Ellie. Russell is said to be his guardian angel. Angel, but an angel in practice who needs to earn his wings. In the movie, he needs a badge for assisting the elderly to become a senior wilderness explorer. Now, the theory says that Carl's guardian angel is a child because he and Ellie were never able to have one. So sad. The house that Carl and Russell fly away in is said to represent Carl's physical attachment to the present world, and floating up is said to represent his transformation from the real world to the spirit world. Paradise Falls in the movie is said to be the gates of heaven, which Carl eventually reaches. Was he dead this whole time? It seems the theory started on Reddit and ballooned from there. Pardon the pun, I'm honestly just trying to quell my pain with humor. Coming in at number eight, Boo grows up to be a witch. This is a Monsters Inc. and Brave collaboration theory. Right, so this one involves time travel and a bit of a stretch of the imagination, but bear with me. So basically I never thought that cute little Boo would turn out to be the witch in Brave. Like what? It seems that there is an easter egg in Brave that has got people cooking up a terrifying theory. It seems that there's a wood carving of a monster that looks a lot like Sully in the witch's cabin. Boo and the witch do after all have the same colour eyes. So basically the theory goes that Boo spent her life looking for Sully, which led her to go through through many, many doors, a la Monsters Inc. In the end, one door took her to the past, and she learned to time travel. Remember the scene in Brave when the witch goes through a door and disappears? Is it Boo? She'd know how to do this. There are further suggestions that the witch has seen the future. She carves a pizza van from wood. Again, she carves the Sully. Maybe she's looking for him, allegedly. Honestly, I can't fathom Sweet Boo being a baddie, but good theory. Coming into number seven, we have another Monsters Inc. theory. This one is like a collaboration with Monsters Inc. and Toy Toy Story is Randall, Andy's monster. In the first and second Toy Story movies, Andy is the perfect age for a monster. In Monsters Inc, monsters go around scaring kids just like Andy to help generate power. Now we know that Disney and Pixar love a good easter egg, and if you look closely, it seems they may have dropped a hint about what goes bump in the night in Andy's room while his toys are sleeping, or motionless. This theory was pointed out by the Super Carlin brothers, who I absolutely love. Have a look at this. Now, this does look a lot like Andy's famous cloud wallpaper, does it not? Also, is this Andy's door in the door lineup? Randall may have been Andy's monster all along. Ugh. Randall. Coming into number six, Andy's dad was murdered, another Toy Story theory. So we've had a bit of news about this from the Disney Pixar camp, but before we talk about what may have been confirmed or denied, I want to talk about this worrying theory. It seems that a fan of the franchise on Reddit posted that they thought Andy's dad, who we never meet, is dead. It wouldn't be surprising, would it, knowing that Disney is basically the parent killers of the ages. Like, dead, dead, dead. Always dead. At least one parent dead, anyway. So the theory goes that Andy's dad was a police officer, but 
but he was shot and killed on duty, hence Andy's obsession with male authority figures. We see Andy and his family move home, maybe this is because of his dad's death. Another theory says that he died from polio, but Toy Story creator Andrew Stanton wrote that this was actually complete and utter fake news. What is going on with his dad then? Tell us Andy, Andrew, Stanton. Coming into number 5, Wally is actually evil. I actually honestly refuse to believe this one. This is pretty long and it's like quite intense to go into. I just don't want to believe it as well because Wally is so cute. Nonetheless, a number of fans out there have pointed out that it is almost impossible for the Earth to become overrun by trash by accident. Some fans say that the Wally unit went rogue and destroyed all of the other Wally units over a 700 year murder spree. Apparently, this is why there is so much waste. There's only one robot around, and we see him cannibalizing parts of his fellow units at the beginning of the movie. Wally can't be a murderer, can he? Coming in at number four, Toy Story is an allegory for the Holocaust. Dustin Hoffman of UGO actually drew some pretty convincing parallels between the Holocaust and Toy Story 3. They argue that the toys are a symbol of the Jewish people who were left behind by the Allies in World War II. The toys, as you will remember, try to seek refuge in the attic, striking a reference to Anne Frank. In the end, they are offloaded to the Sunnyside Daycare Center, which turns out to be a lot like a prison or a concentration camp. There's then the whole incinerator scene which Hoffman links to the final solution and the death camps. Pretty heavy and terrifying stuff. In the end, the toys are saved by well doing aliens. Now, a lot of Jews were actually freed from concentration camps at the end of the war, although, of course, six million weren't. Some fans who have jumped on the Toy Story Holocaust bandwagon have gone as far as to say that. Actually, the toys did die in the incinerator, and the alien rescue is actually their journey to the afterlife. What about Toy Story 4 then? I don't know. Coming into number three, Nemo from Finding Nemo is dead. Hmm. In a Sixth Sense style plot twist, some people think that Nemo is dead. Now, according to a popular internet theory, Nemo also died when his mum was killed in the shark attack at the beginning. Basically, Nemo's mum and all of their eggs were killed at the very beginning of the movie, except for one. Nemo. Basically, though, the theory says that it was all in Marlin's head, and in an attempt to cope with the tragedy, he imagined one of the eggs was left. Now he dreams up Nemo, a dependent fish who, in theory, would never leave him, but it all goes wrong. Such are the lows of depression. In the end, Marlin accepts his grief. Apparently, Nemo means nothing in Latin, and some theorists basically went from there. We have another Finding Nemo theory up next. This one is actually even more horrifying. So, kids, please close your ears for the love of all things. Holy. Coming into number two, Nemo would have had sex with his. Actually, do you know what? I just can't say it. I'm not gonna say it. I won't. So basically, this is both a theory and a biological fact. Nemo is a clownfish. All clownfish are born as hermaphrodites with both sexual organs. They develop into male or females depending on their social experience. And in the clownfish world, females are dominant. Who run the world? Female clownfish, that's who. But basically, they can also change sex when need be. It seems if Nemo's mum had died, Marlin, his dad, would have turned into a female to become more dominant and protect his offspring. Then his dad turned mum and Nemo would have mated because fish don't understand incest. Then if Nemo's dad slash mum had died, Nemo would have changed into a female and mated with another male. Cool. Sometimes science is scarier than a horror movie. Finally, coming into number one, we have the dead friends theory. There is a lot of Toy Story in this list, but let's face it, Toy Story is the most popular Pixar creation and there are three three of the movies soon to be four. So as we know in the world of Toy Story, toys drop down motionless when humans come into a room. Humans play with the toys and the toys pretend not to be sentient. Well, have you ever thought about this? Illumise wrote on Tumblr, if the toys in Toy Story died, the kids would keep playing with them like normal, but the other toys would be playing with their dead friends. What the hell? Honestly, what the hell indeed? My question is though, can toys in Toy Story die? Like, if they're dropped from a great height with that killer toy? Like probably not, so unless they're burnt like they almost were, how can they die anyway? Although I think back and I remember the mutant toys, like I guess that's pretty messed up. Sid was a horrible, horrible kid. They're kind of like living corpses, a bit human centipede but in Toy Story, this is so dark and none of them can speak. So dark. Honestly, Pixar, you've done it again. The Babadook is from Monsters Inc. So we know that in Monsters Inc., monsters harness the screams of children to create power. Well, there's a theory out there on the internet that the Babadook is a monster from the Monsters verse. To be honest, Sam screams could power a city. In 
the Babadook book, the monster comes from a closet, which is classic Monsters Inc. behaviour. Does Sam have his own door, and is the Babadook his monster? He's just a working monster like the rest of them, clocking in as 9 to 5. Then I have to say, maybe the gay icon Babadook, with the smile and the colourful hat and sunglasses, maybe he could be the laughter era monster. See? It makes so much sense. Coming in at number 9, we have a huge aviation disaster and Edna Mode's death plot from The Incredibles. So Edna Mode is the woman who makes the superhero suits in The Incredibles, and if you remember correctly, she was very anti-cape. Dyna guy. Oh, he had a great look. Oh, the cape and the boots. No capes. Who can even blame her as well? We did learn that the superhero Strato Gale died when her cape got sucked into a jet engine. This means that she also likely took the plane down with her too. A bird in the engine can do this to a plane, so a human, well, that's nasty. It is thought that the accident took place in 1989, forcing superheroes into hiding for 15 years until the film's release in 2004. So, the plane does look a bit like a United Airlines plane. We suspect that the incident happened in America. Could this plane crash have been the real cause behind the Denver to Chicago Flight 232 crash? Some people on the internet certainly think so. In that crash, 111 people died and 185 people survived. Beyond that, it gets even darker. It is thought that actually a cape was included on the villain of the movie, specifically so he would meet the same fate. What about the people on the planes though? What about them? Coming into number 8, did Andy's mum abandon Jesse? This one has done a few rounds across the internet, and it seems that Andy's mum, the sole parent in his life, may have been a callous toy abandoner. We know that Jesse was devastated when her previous owner Emily grew up and left her. Clues lie in Andy's hat, which looks way more like Jesse's. Could it have been a hand down from his mum? His mum also mentions Woody is an old family toy, a collector's item from the 1950s, so maybe her parents. Meh. When we see Emily's room, it looks like Jesse and Emily were together in the 60s or 70s, making Andy's mum the right age to have been playing with toys, assuming she's in her early to mid 30s when the first Toy Story came out in the late 90s. In the box that Jesse is bundled into, we see other cowgirl paraphernalia, but the hat isn't there. Was the hat handed down to Andy? It certainly looks like it. Also, look at this shot of Emily as a teen. Could this be Andy's mum? It could be. Coming into number 7, Riley's parents aren't okay in Inside Out. Well, that's pretty worrying, isn't it? During Disney Pixar's Inside Out, we get to see inside people's brains, and I kind of like that. Not only do we see inside Riley's brain, we also get a little glimpse at other people, specifically her mum and her dad's. Now, the interesting thing, though, is that when we peek into her mum's brain, we see that sadness is the leading emotion running the show, and that in her dad's brain, the alpha emotion is anger. So, her dad is angry and her mum is sad, that's pretty depressing, isn't it? We also hear his angry brain refer to her as simply woman, which he says in a derogatory way. What? What is it, woman? What? It doesn't actually really seem like from this quick snapshot that they're a very happy couple. There are other theories out there that Riley is adopted, but that isn't particularly dark or scary, so we'll leave that out for now. Coming into number six, the bad guys are helping each other in Ratatouille and Up. Ratatouille is one of my favourite Pixar movies, especially because I love food and a cooking rat is hilarious. I also loved Up, although I am not down with the character of Charles Muntz. He learned that dogs are sentient and he basically then ends up abusing them as slaves. How did Muntz even find out that animals can communicate and work with humans? Well, some people think that he was in cahoots with the villain of Ratatouille, Chef Skinner. So Remy the Rat works with Linguini to create beautiful food, but when Chef Skinner finds out that Remy can cook, he tries to capture him and put him to work on a soulless frozen fast food project. In the end, Chef Skinner gets away, and the theory goes that Skinner flees France and heads to South America. America, where he met the villain Muntz and told him the animal's secret. With that information, Muntz is able to develop his collars. Also, does this snap from Ratatouille foreshadow it all? Possibly. Coming into number 5, Toy Story is promoting the Illuminati. Ah, there's nothing like a mid list top 10 appearance of the Illuminati. It's classic, it's a tailor's oldest time. This honestly is a bit of a stretch for me, but some people are convinced that Toy Story has hidden Illuminati themes. 
I don't know though. There are straws to be clutched, and people are going to clutch them. People are pointing out stars on the wall of Andy's bedroom. Stars, of course, are made of triangles, and triangles are, of course, the ultimate symbol of the Illuminati. Also, inverted pentacles are a thing, and they're spotted in a toy store. There also seems to be a sun pyramid on display. Lotso also references pyramids, and Mrs. Potato Head has just one eye. Honestly, I do think this theory is ridiculous, and I don't believe that Toy Story is controlled by a murderous and elusive secret order, but maybe I'm a skeptic. After all, what was happening at Walt Disney's Club 33? Coming into number 4, Andy has no friends, and maybe he's a clone. There is something weird going on with Andy. Have a look at him. Here he is. We know that he loves playing with his toys, but does he actually have any friends? Sure, we meet them, right? But do we? There's a scene in which Andy is seen hanging out with his lad mates. The only thing is, they all have the same face. Andy's face. Even Sid looks a lot like Andy, just with different colour eyes. When Andy grows up, he looks a little different, but the theory goes that as a kid, he didn't actually have any friends. He invented them in his mind. That, or he's a clone. Some people even think that Sid and Andy are related. Okay, listen, I don't like saying this as much as you guys aren't gonna like hearing it, but there are some darker sides to Toy Story when you really think about it. Get ready because I'm only gonna say this once. Coming in at number three, the toys have all seen Andy masturbate. Good, great, can we move on now? No? Well, basically, all the toys likely witness Andy's transition from boy to teen and all of the dark stuff that involves. Why worry your webcam is watching you when you have a room filled with eyes watching you until you finally get rid of all of your toys? But I have to say, even people I knew at university had a teddy on their bed, and that's pretty grim if you think that all toys are real and can see you. Stop watching me. Coming in at number two, Sully was murdered and turned into a toilet seat cover. Okay, so in one of our Disney scary theories, we talked about how Zazu said to Mufasa that Scar would make an excellent throw rug, and then he turned up in Hercules as, well, a rug. Well, we can write that one off as karma. Yes, I think that hunting sucks, but Scar was the literal worst. You know who wasn't the worst though? Who was arguably actually the best? Sully of Monsters Inc. It seems unfortunately though that the lovable monster may have met the same nasty fate. In one scene of Monsters Inc, Randall, the creepy monster, explains to Sully why he hates humans. He says, I've heard humans skin monsters and make toilet seat covers out of their fur. Sully's like, that's nonsense. And Sure. Unfortunately, though, in Pixar's short Partysaurus Rex, we see a very suspicious looking toilet seat cover. Like, it can't be, can it? Are the things just like Randall said? Did Sully make a mistake in trusting humans? Is he now dead and all that's left of him is his fur? Say it isn't so. Finally, coming into number one, this is a bit like pondering black holes in the wider universe. Honestly, I am mind boggled. We have the Pixar theory. So, the Pixar theory is a consuming mind melt of a theory that all Pixar movies are related and exist along a timeline of a shared universe. A really messed up universe. There'll never be enough time in any of our videos to tell you in depth how this works, but let me try and summarize for you. So, it seems it all starts with Brave with the Will of the Wisps, aka magic. This magic interacts with animals, humans, and objects. A time loop is created by a magic witch who disappears through a door. It later turns out in the theory that the witch is Boo from Monsters Inc. The timeline spans from the 14th century right up to the 50th century with Monsters Inc. At one point, animals rise up to try and overthrow humans, but machines help the humans win. But then the remaining humans were sent off into space on a ship called Axiom amid a worldwide takeover from an evil corporation BNL. It goes on, but it's a mind melt. And it's a terrifying glimpse of the future. All right, let's do this. Coming in at number 10, we have the lemon party. So, I don't know if you have ever watched our top 10 things you should never Google video, but basically on that list, you would have found lemon party. If you don't know what a lemon party is, it involves naked old people and the dawn of the age of the internet. Either way, it seems that the animators behind Disney's cars have been having a good old inappropriate lol. In one scene in Cars 2, it clearly shows the vehicle having a very literal lemon party, a nod to the horrible sexy former website. Ugh. Coming into number 9, we have 
Apple brainwashing. Many people have accused Disney's cars of secret brainwashing. There are a couple of strands to the brainwashing theories out there, both of which I think are kind of ridiculous. In Cars 3, there is a Mac iCar with a prominent Apple logo over it, and it is the number 84, which is the year that Apple released their Mac. Many people think that this is a product placement, but in reality, it's probably just a nod to Steve Jobs, who founded Apple and once owned Pixar. Some people are taking the 84 thing to be a reference to the surveillance state of 1984, a nod to the suspicion that iPhones are listening to us, which I think they actually are. Cars 3 is making young boys subservient to females, apparently, at number 8. I mean, to me, this is absolute pish posh, but we needed to make a 10 point list, so here it goes. An article on the highly credible return of the kings.com praises the first two movies for instilling a sense of the brotherhood, but it slams the third movie because Lightning McQueen is trained by a young female car, who eventually ends up racing for him and winning. The article says that this showcases how, in the age of feminism, strong men are expected to step aside for females who haven't worked as hard to get where they are. Honestly, I really, really don't agree. I don't think that this was the message at all. The scariest thing for me is probably that people out there are worried about a victorious female car, like just cars. Coming in at number seven, we have Car Wars. It is heavily hinted at in cars that there may have been car wars in the past. In the same way that humans have had world wars, there is an underlying suggestion that cars may have had done too. The clue lies in the character of Skipper, a plane who also appears in the movie Planes. Now, Skip is an old Navy Corsair, a warplane. If he's a warplane, then there must have been a war to fight in. He also mentions that he was shot down in a fight with Japanese planes. If there were car universe wars, then there must have also been a car universe Hitler equivalent. Thanks, Tumblr, for that theory. Thanks a bunch. All right, moving on from car Hitler to car Jesus at number six. People have really run wild with the whole car parallel universe thing. A lot of people have spotted the car in cars that looks like the Pope, the Pope Mobile. From that, they've deduced that in the cars world there must have been car religions, which is probably how all of those early car wars got started. If there are car religions, does that mean there's a car Jesus? If so, like, hello, has anyone else just gone cross eyed with this mind boggling revelation? Car Jesus. Others say that the car pope, which contains a car within a car, is actually a driving monument to the car the actual last surviving pope died in. This opens up a whole new can of scary theory worms. Is the movie Cars trying to tell us that the pope is under threat when? he rides in a motorcade. Honestly, I'm just exhausted thinking about some of these theories. Coming into number 5, there is no original thought in Cars. Is the world of Cars a parallel universe, or did creativity and original thought die out with the humans? Wait, what? The humans are dead? Yes, but we'll get to that later. In Cars, the automobiles have similar lives to modern westerners, but instead of making their own original creative content, they copy old human entertainment and translate it into mechanism entertainment. For example, did you see what's playing at the Carsverse movie? Movie theater, toy car story. Right, they could watch that or they could watch Incredimobiles. Whoever these cars are and however they have come about, they aren't very creative and original. Isn't a world of recycled content, but instead of people, just cars, kind of weird and terrifying? Also, in movies like The Fast and the Furious, if humans are cars in other movies, then what are actual cars? Honestly, there's so much to think about. Coming into number four, there are no families in cars. Have you guys ever noticed how there are no families in the movie Cars? Well, it hasn't been lost on some people. I assume the lack of family units is to allow Disney further space to not explain how cars are created, because car sex is really just too much to think about. I'm guessing the car stork delivers the car babies. Ah. There are very small references to traces of family, but we never actually see a family unit. Is this just further evidence that Disney hates families? I think it might be, or something. Ok, so in the last few points we address a major plot gap for cars, which is the lack of humans. These next theories are basically possible explanations for their absence, all of which are pretty worrying. Also, at this point, I want to be honest with you, I've accidentally scripted 11 points, it does happen more often than you think, but I'm just gonna go with it. So welcome to 3A everyone, this is 3A, the apocalypse. A lot of people think that Cars is set millions of years after Wally, a movie in which we all know that humans have jettisoned the earth after filling it with trash. Well, this story at the end of Wally is that humans return to earth eager to restore it. The Cars theory goes that actually humans had no idea how to restore it, for example how the captain and Wally said he's gonna grow a pizza plant, like, if only, but mate, good luck. Soon the humans die out and the robots create a superhuman race. Cars. Rightio then. Another scary theory is that there is no humans because the air is unbreathable. This is coming into 3B. 3B, ladies and gents. 
happening all over again. This just makes sense, doesn't it? A whole entire world filled with a whole bunch of cars. Total internal combustion creates exhaust, which creates pollution. If the population of cars Earth is anything like human Earth, billions of cars would create billions of fumes, which may be how all of the humans died. One step into the cars world, and it would be curtains for soft human lungs. It's not the cough that carried her off, it's the coffin that carried her off in. I remember my grandma saying that to me. Coming into number two, the cars killed the people. Oh no. There are a number of theories circulating out there that the cars are AI vehicles created by robots in order to destroy humans, and like, at this point, maybe. The theory goes that the cars are sentient self driving vehicles, and they had had enough of human dominance, especially from those who were trying to cut back on carbon emissions. That just ain't cricket if you're a car. One theory suggests that cars rebelled against the humans and ran them all over in a bloody massacre, and then burned the bodies with gasoline. Not feeling so great about cars right now. Finally, this is one of the most disturbing cars theories of all time. People are in the cars. Some people say that the cars universe exists independent of humans, like a parallel universe if you will, wherein humans never actually existed, but they're wrong. How can you tell? Well, the cars have door handles and wing mirrors. Now these would be pretty superfluous in a world without humans, and evolution would have sorted that right out. So humans must have existed at some point in the cars universe, but where are they now? Well, get this. This is one wild theory. It says that actually the humans are somehow in the cars. This theory is called the homunculus theory, and it says that humans are lab grown in amniotic vats, and are then embedded within an automotive exoskeleton. Whew. A quote from the theory on jalpanic.com reads, Eventually automated robotic factories to produce cars were built, and human babies were produced in amniotic vats, and then directly embedded within a automotive skeleton body. Ok, do you want to see what this may look like via the medium of a horrifying sketch? Of course you do. Note the liquid waste removal tube. I'm not about it. I'm absolutely not about it.